Okay, I think we can start, yeah? I'm supposed to be speaking in the mic, but I sound really funny. Um, so, welcome everyone, you're all coming out tonight. Um, we'll start with um, the unconventional start by thanking the people that have helped us tonight. Um, I'd like to start with my students. Tsego Faso, Mabaso, Dumi, Faeli, Fonze, Matabate, and then the Fine Arts team, Zen Mari, Ramwati Fasani, Reshma Shiva. And then the organizations that helped us make this night possible, Vansa, The Point of Order, and get a get a library. And then of course Sydney Gilbusu who eagerly accepted our invitation to feature her work that you see on the site um, gallery. So we, we thank um, also a special thank to Shadin Khan for making a special trip all the way from Grahamstown. All right, maybe that should be followed by a clap of hands. <laughs> Some of you may not know me. Uh, my name is Nandobego Ndombela. I am part of the group uh, Black Farm. I'm also a staff member at the Red School of Arts. I'll read because I need to keep my thoughts together. So just to give you a little background, Black Mark Collective Critical Thought is a Durban based reading group, reading and writing group, consisting of myself, Tiffany Mentor, Samim Rui, Kwezi Kule, and Londo Ilanga. They're all amongst us. The group was established in 2013 as a peer review platform for members to critically engage with each other's writing and intellectual projects. Also, part of the reason why we came together was out of a frustration that we felt based on our experiences undergoing postgraduate studies, realizing how limited available writing by black writers is and continues to be in this field well beyond the dawn of democracy. Or rather, should I say, how unevenly acknowledged the contributions of black writers are. As such, the result of this has um, had two outcomes. The first was in 2015, where we hosted the first event called Visual Arts Symposium, which took place at the Walter Sisulu University, hosted by the Fine Arts Department, where a number of black practitioners from different institutions across the country presented on their work, some of whom are with us tonight. You can visit our blog to see more information on that. So tonight is our second event, and as you have read the abstract that went with the invitation, we are interested in expanding the discussion around this notion of black modernisms, with hope to, firstly, complicate what has become individualized incidences instead of addressing what is a symptom of larger institutional problems that govern this field. We know this is not the first of such public incidences and will probably will not be the last. The second hope is to really open up the space for conversations that address this uneven acknowledgement where we often ask ourselves the question, when are we going to start speaking about this as an expanded field of the arts without always falling into traps of binaries, reinforcing invisibilities and exclusions? Is it really possible to speak about these issues without someone being silenced, instrumentalized, or totally ignored? So, I want to give you a little bit of a 
insight of some of the reasons why this platform was really important for us. Immediately after sending the invitations out, an email came through, which I will not go into, but which was essentially about the right to respond. I pondered with this for a day or two. Because of course, there is the need for response, but I think with what has been published in City Press, we've seen a number of responses being published. But then of course I thought as a curator, when you put up an exhibition, you do this with an understanding that it is a public event with the aim of engaging the public, which then means anyone who wishes to respond or comment may do so. My understanding of course is that the exhibition of, are the curator's creative tools in which they pose a series of questions, make certain claims or gestures that which allow viewers to question back, react and interpret. This is the reason we're here today. Furthermore, by asking these questions, it means that as a curator, you are making certain inclusions and also making certain exclusions. And these inclusions and exclusions are often apparent through the title, the statement, the installation and the institution where you choose to put up your exhibition. That means also as a curator you're making a proposition within your curatorial framework which often means you're binding your work with certain institutional ideologies which then of course starts to inscribe certain understandings of the work that is on display. Now, as I was thinking about my uh, address tonight, I was also thinking around this idea, we're all familiar with probably three key exhibitions that I think this exhibition follows on. The 1985 Tributaries, 1988 Neglected Tradition, 1997 Blended Lives. All these exhibitions, as we know, made a really important contribution to the histories of South African arts. But they also made certain ideological claims over the work of black artists. And these ideologies have also come to reinforce a certain way that we experience the work of black artists. Those are often the understanding that the experiences of black artists is a collective one which starts to produce issues of sameness, clustering and singularizing their experiences. We also are constantly told that there is very little known about these artists and one can't help notice and feel pity as opposed to sadness and loss because again, how many of us can remember the names of the artists that are included in the exhibition that is currently up? Well, in the case of Black Artism, we understand the curator's claims to be about locating Black artists within the expanded field of multiple modernisms. But these modernisms are, however, this I gathered and attending one of the uh, walkabouts, is about locating the comparisons of these artists' works with modernisms of the West. The question I kept on asking is that why do we need to plug this artist's work into these binaries once more? How does this make us understand the context in which these artists work? How does it actually help us gain the information that is constantly, even in 2016, still missing? How are these new labels making us understand the work of artists within an, an expanded field of the arts when large omissions still remains. I immediately when I received the invitation, there were glaring few omissions. 
passes like Velo Vitesmo, Clarice Gudanzu, Ernest Ngoba, David Kulwane, Vincent Baloi, Welcome Pokoba, Oma Bacha, Peter Clark, Tero Makoba, Alfred Toba, Louis Gossi, Ernest Cole, Simon Dejeto, Owen Doe, Gamakulu Deniso, which was interesting, the an interesting parallel because the Gamakulu Deniso exhibition was here around the same time. Lefifi Tladi, Geoffrey Pagati, Motlavane, Mashogai, John Mo Avashoni, Gwanye, Albert Gwanye, Esther Masango, Albert Adams, Eric Mbata, Paul CBC, Tammy Jali, Dito Zungu, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, if not a whole lot more. So again, these are names that are not on the exhibition. And I have not even begun to count art collectives such as Umdali and Dashihi and many others that have that ought to also be considered. <coughs> so of course we know that there's a byline. And the byline says these are works that are taken from the collection. Yet we also know that these names, some of the names that are called out, are in the collection. So the question still remains. By black modernisms, what is the criteria of inclusion? and exclusion. So I've made my observations and, um, and these are my responses and I think the panel this here tonight is going to ask other questions. The one announcement I'd like to make, we have one missing panel member as you notice from the invitation, Dr. Rory <coughs> Nesta who because of work he's doing on Afatoa had to stay longer in Cape Town. His voice would have added something really interesting and perspective, given that he's someone whose work is focused on a number of individual projects by black South African artists. I must mention though that in his SMS of apology, he did express relief to not have to come tonight. <laughs> and I said to him, well, this is not a surprise. Of course, you have to be brave to face tonight's crowd. So I will not hold the stage any longer. I'll, he I'll hand over to Zen Murray, who is currently part of the group that heads the finance department. Is that correct? And who will also be introducing the speakers and moderating tonight's discussion. Thank you.